In this presentation, we will work a problem recording transactions in both the debt service fund and the government-wide activities. The information is going to be on the left side. We're going to put that into the blue area on the right side. We're going to journalize in the general journal. Then we're going to post that to our worksheet. Our worksheet having a trial balance so we can see some context here and see these accounts increasing and decreasing. Assets in green, liabilities in orange, what would be the equity section or the net assets or the fund balance section in the light blue, what would be the income statement in a for-profit organization, the temporary accounts, those that would close out to what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization, dark blue, we're going to have the beginning balance, enter the adjustments, then have the ending balance, same kind of information for the government-wide activity. Remember, government-wide activities on an accrual basis as opposed to the funds on a modified accrual basis in terms of the governmental fund, such as the debt service fund. So we'll be able to see those differences as we go. Let's see the first transaction. We have estimated transfer from the general fund. So this is going to be, we're going to post actually the budget now into the debt service fund. So we're going to say that there's going to be a certain amount of debt that's going to have to be serviced. Where's that funding going to come from? We're going to say it's going to be transferred from the general fund. So it's going to be transferred in. So we're going to record that type of basically kind of revenue, which is more like a, another category of a transfer into the debt service fund. Therefore, we're going to think of this 142. That's going to be the amount that we're estimating that we're going to have to pay to service the debt. And it's also what we're going to estimate the amount that we're going to have to put in from the general fund in order to do so. The two things then being equal and opposite. We're going to say that's what we think we're going to have to pay to service the debt. And therefore, that's what we're going to have to transfer in. So we can record both the expense and the revenue. We're going to say the revenue is going to from a transfer in so we would record that rather than in revenue into something like other financing sources the transfer in therefore we're going to be using estimated other financing sources on the transfer in notice that revenue and other financing sources would have typical credit balances therefore the budgetary account will be the opposite having a debit balance so we're going to start off with a debit to the estimated other financing sources the credit then is going to be the related kind of expense type of account we would have. And would and so the expenditures would be debit balances. The budgetary account then called appropriations will have the opposite or a credit balance. So then we're going to credit the appropriations. So there's going to be the debit and credit. The amounts we're going to pull over from our data to the right 142. That's going to be the debit and the credit. What's going to happen? Let's go ahead and post this out. We're going to post out the estimated other financing sources. So that's going to be down here. Estimated other financing sources. We are in K K9 equals. And we're going to scroll over to that 142,000. That increases to 142. And then we have the appropriations up top in K7 equals. And we'll pull over those appropriations. So we've posted the budgetary accounts. No activity, no journal entry in the government-wide activities because this is the budgetary activity government-wide on the accrual basis, not having the budgetary uh, accounts recorded there. Let's take a look at number two. Issued bonds for construction project bonds mature in equal annual amounts for 10 years. So here we have uh, the bonds. We've got the face amount. We've got the rate, the premium, and the accrued interest payable. So what we're going to do is go first to the government-wide activities because that's going to be more familiar to what we would expect in a normal accrual accounting if we were to record bonds to it. So if we're issuing bonds, typically we would say, all right, well, we know cash is going to be increasing. We know that the other side is typically going to be bonds payable. So we have bonds payable. And then we have the other two items that we were dealing with here is going to be the premium on the bonds payable because we're issuing it at something higher than uh, the face amount of the bond and then we had to deal with the accrued interest so we have the accrued interest that's also going to be a payable so if we pick this up then the numbers i would first start with the bonds payable we're going to say i'm going to make this a credit so i'm going to say negative scroll back over and pick up the bonds payable on the face amount of the bond and then we're going to have uh, the premium on the bond which uh, was given at the at the 57,300 so we're going to say that there is a premium on the bond I'm going to say negative and the premium obviously is a credit as opposed to a discount which would be a debit so we're going to have the premium and then we have the accrued interest as well also a credit so I'm going to say negative of the accrued interest and we'll pick up the accrued interest the debit then will be the negative sum 
of those of those uh, three. So there we have our kind of a normal type of, of journal entry. If we were to issue the bonds, we record this out into the government wide activity. We're going to say, all right, cash is going to go up. We're going to increase cash. And then we have the bonds payable. Bonds payable is going to increase with a credit. So we're in U6. So we're going to increase that with a credit. And then we have the premium. So the premium is going to increase. We're going to say that's going to increase with a credit. And then we have the accrued interest, also a payable, also going to increase. So in U8, we're going to say equals that amount and we increase it as well. That puts us back in balance with the green zeros. Now we want to take this journal entry apart and think about, okay, what's going to be included in the debt service fund of this normal journal entry that we would have for issuing the bond itself. So I would make this journal entry and then think about, well, the financing portion has to do with the interest portion. That's going to be the premium on the bond and the accrued interest so we're going to increase the debt service fund by the cash amount related to these two items and then we're going to record these two items we're not going to record them as premium on the bonds payable because we're not recording the long-term liability we're recording the flows that's going to be an other financing source and the interest is going to go to revenue so we're going to record this transaction on the debt service fund like so we're going to say that cash is going to be increasing and then we have other financing sources and that's going to be for the uh the other finance for the bond proceeds and then we're going to say that the uh, the accrued interest is revenue so that's going to be revenue to the debt service fund so on the credit side we're just going to pick these up from i'm going to say this equals the journal entry that we built over here we're going to say that 57.3 we want to pick up that amount and then we're going to say that we want to pick up the accrued interest so those are the two amounts that we pick up then on the debit side negative sum of those items and there's going to be our transaction for the debt service fund so let's record this we're going to record the cash first so cash is going to go up top in k3 equals and we'll pick up the 8150 then the other financing sources so other financing sources we want the uh, proceeds on the bonds that's in k10 equals and we'll pick up that 57300 and then we want the revenue so revenue up top that's going to be in k6 equals and we will pick up the revenue amount so there we have those items that puts us then back in balance let's take a look at number three where it says we transfer funds from the general fund to the debt service fund to pay interest so we're going to transfer uh, money from the debt service fund over in order to pay the interest this is the amount that we're going to use. We could, you could take a look at the calculation here. We're going to say the face amount of the bond is at the rate 5%. If we were to multiply that out, we're going to get the 250, 285, 500. That would be for a year. We divide that by two because we're going to say it's semi-annual. And that's going to be the uh, 142, 750. Then we're going to subtract out the premium and uh, the accrued interests. And that brings us to the 61, 700. So we're going to say then that cash is going to be increasing. So we'll say cash is going up and we're transferring this in. So it's going to be other financing sources from the transfer in. So that's going to be the debit and the credit. So we'll pick up the debit in number three. It's going to be that 61.7. That'll be the debit and the credit. So let's post that out. We're going to say cash is here. Cash is going to be increasing. So we'll increase the cash. So we're in uh, K3, something's in it. I'm going to select F2 plus F2. Scroll back down and we'll pick up the cash amount. And then the credit's going to go to the other financing sources. So other financing sources, the transfer in is in K8 equals. And we'll scroll over and we'll pick up that credit of the 61.7. That puts us back in balance. Now there's no transaction in the government-wide activity because this is going to be going from one fund to another. So this is like an intergovernment type of activity nothing really happening from the government wide perspective as a whole it's an interfund uh, type of transaction so let's take a look at number four entries to record payment of interest so now we're going to make the payment of interest which is going to be this amount so we we're going to pay that off and you'll note of course at this point in time that's exactly the amount that we have in the cash because this is the point of the debt service fund we're trying to transfer exactly what we need into it and then make the payment out of it so we could see the activity of the flow 
of the financing within uh, the debt service fund. So first we'll go to the government wide activity because that's gonna be more similar to what we would think under an accrual basis. So if we're gonna make the payment on the bonds, we're gonna ha we have these accrued interest on the bonds. We're gonna have to remove that. That's got a credit on it. So we're gonna do the opposite and we're gonna, we're gonna debit it. So we got the accrued uh, interest payable. There's also gonna be a premium on the bonds so that we're going to uh, remove. So we got the premium on the bonds payable. And we've got cash is gonna be going down. So we're gonna say cash is decreasing. And then the difference is gonna to go to the interest expense. So the interest expense will then be the difference. Now the accrued, uh, the accrued interest payable, we know that's gonna be the 23,750. So it's been accrued, we're gonna reduce it 23,750. The premium on the bond, we're gonna amortize straight, straight line over the life of the bond. There's gonna be 20 periods to it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna say this is gonna be negative of this premium. So the premium we have there divided by 20, the number of periods. And so we'll straight line it, reducing the premium on, on a straight line uh, method. And then the cash is going to be the, uh, well, we could say negative of the payment amount that we are going to make, which is this 142,750 semi-annual payment. And then the interest is going to be the difference between those the debits minus the credits. I'm going to say the plug formula negative sum of everything above it. So now we have the debits then at 142,750 equaling the credits. Let's go ahead and post this out then. We're in the accrued interest payable. So accrued interest payable is in U8. Something's in it. I'm gonna say plus or F2 plus, and then pick up and then we gotta say F2 again, and then scroll over and pick up the accrued interest payable. So it goes down to zero. Then we've got the premium on the bonds payable. Here's the, pre here's the premium on the bonds payable account. We are in U7, F2 plus F2. Scrolling back over on the premium on the bonds payable, so it decreases. Then we have the cash, so cash is gonna be up top. We are in U3, F2 plus F2. Scrolling down to the cash, it's gonna go down. And then we've got the interest expense. So interest expense is gonna be in U11 equals the interest expense. So there's going to be our payment here. Now, if we were to construct this in terms of the debt service fund, what are we going to be picking up in the debt service fund? We're going to make the payment of the 142,750, uh, and that's going to be an expenditure. So note that 142,750 is the payment of basically, in essence, some form of interest, and that's what we're tracking in the debt service fund. So the debt service fund, a lot more straightforward type of transaction to record that, the financing activity. We're going to say that cash is going to be decreasing by the payment. And then it's all going to go into basically an expense type account, an expenditure account for interest. That's going to be the debit. So that's going to be that one. And then we'll pick up the same amount, which equal to, and we'll scroll back over and we want to pick up that 142,750. That's going to be the debit and the credit. So there's the debit and the credit. If we were to post this out, then we're going to go down to the expenditures. That's gonna be in K11, gonna say equals and scroll over to that 142,750, increasing this amount. And then we're gonna to go to the cash, that's gonna be up top. We're in cell K3, I'm gonna say F2 plus F2, scroll back down and we'll pick up that credit. And so there we have that. And you'll notice ties out really neatly because we're basically inputting what we need in order to, to then pay off what is gonna be financed for. So the cash went up for what we need in order to finance the debt and then back down. The activity down here, obviously, as we saw with the budgetary accounts, the appropriations tie out to the estimated uh, expenditures, although they were slightly different than the, than the actual expenditures. But then the actual expenditures, the revenue, of course, ties out to the, um, the amount of, of financing as well, the expenditures and the revenue uh, tie each other out so everything kind of basically washes out so that we can then see this debt service fund and track the activity, the financing within the debt service fund.